have a very messy crafting area or another hobby area that is super cluttered? I get this question all the time from people and I can relate because my hobby area happens to be all about canning and right now it's about to be exploding down here and it got super messy. Stay tuned, I'm gonna give you some awesome tips and tricks for how to declutter and organize your hobby area, your crafting area. But first, I need to get my area clean. Grab your tea, let's get started. Everything should start with tea. And as an ADHDer, I need my podcast to be entertained. Let's get to it. Before I jump into the tips, which are, I'm actually going to use a lot of these principles here. I'm gonna show you me tidying up my hobby area. Now I'm not really into crafts at the moment, although I have been, Right now, I'm really into preserving and gardening and canning. So this area has gotten kind of messy. I actually moved this bookshelf from our furnace room and replaced a different one, which was shorter. And I will show you that in a minute because I use that area for starting my seed starts. And here are some small little jars. Those ones will probably get used last. Now, this is a roaster and a Canadian tire bucket, of course. And I'm gonna stick that roaster under here. I don't like having things on the floor. I like to just have furniture pretty much on the floor and everything else should be in a place. When I am decluttering, I usually have three bins, one for bringing things home, one for garbage, one for recycling. I'm kind of using this for all of that because I'm really just tidying things up. And here I am just shuffling things around and now going to get to the fun part, which is putting things up on my shelves. And I am just so happy. Those pickles there on that shelf, they were up in the kitchen for a while because I just could not justify bringing them down until I could tidy up this area. And it just feels so good to get those things on there. And the other shelf you, you saw, I had a lot of other things on it too. And I'm just moving things around. It just feels so good. This is the thing about decluttering that is wonderful. When you declutter, you have space for things to all have a home, which is ultimately one of my major goals. I'm saving all of these boxes for the jars because they are starting to fill up. Now this Lego bin I just tucked under there and you can see some of our food stores because we are in an earthquake zone and I'm dancing because I always celebrate. Now this area is the furnace room and you can see those lights there. Those are my grow lights and a couple other things. So first I decided to pull some things out of there because clearly they need to be organized. We also have an area under my stairs that needs to be cleaned. And this whole section of the basement is getting tidied up because my son is moving and it's going to be a bit of a theme on my channel in the next few weeks. You know what's fun? When you find like an old, old router box and you know that this is not useful at all anymore and you think, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this to a, an electronic recycler. Now I am on Vancouver Island in Canada, which is arguably the mildest, maybe it's not arguably the mildest area, but I really like to get a head start on my plants in the spring and sometimes in the fall. So I have these, they're just actually plain LED lights and I got them at Home Depot, but I am putting them back on the shelf. And you could see I was changing my podcast because Lord knows I need to be entertained. I'm really enjoying this new one called Tooth and Claw, which is all about like animal attacks, but like bear attacks because I have bears in my backyard and I want to know how to manage them. And uh, just as a little aside, he really recommends bear spray. But anyway, I am putting these up and those little hooks are so scary because you can lose them inside the light and it takes a lot of time because you literally have to take the light apart to get the hooks out. Exactly what I didn't want to happen happened. I lost one of those little links and they are so strong to bend. Ugh. Good news, I found a little hook somewhere else that had not been in use, but I'm very happy now. The principles I did earlier was grouping like things together. And that is sort of something similar that I'm doing here is I like to have a designated area for one thing. And I will get into those tips in a minute. But this is an area where I will start my seedlings and it's an area that needs to be in use for months and months. So we could put other things in here, but what's great about having a decluttered house is that we do have space to put things. Although we do also have a larger house, so I won't be saying, oh, 
oh yeah, you know, like your tiny little apartment, you should have lots of open space. No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is if at all possible, have a designated area. Now this here is my heating mat and I'm gonna throw that on there too. If you had a smaller house or an apartment and maybe you wanted a similar setup or for something else that is kind of seasonal, having a way to store other things is important if you want to keep things somewhat tidy. Oh my gosh, and it looks great. I love that the lights turned on, woohoo. All right, we can plant some seeds. Getting into some tips for you, but first look how good this looks now. So much tidier is just a thing of beauty. I literally dragged my husband down here and was like, behold the beauty of this. And he was like, oh yeah, that's great. And the shelf with the food looks great too. And of course there's really no better angle to take this at. So that actually was quicker than I expected, which is why it is so good to make sure that you don't have a ton of stuff, which brings me to the tips for organizing your crafting or your hobby supplies. So number one would be assess your inventory. So what all do you have to organize? I want you to look at your entire situation you have going on with your hobby supplies and get a real feel for what you have. The next thing is to decide what you want your end result to be. So quite often people say to me, oh, I have so many crafting supplies and there's just so much and blah, 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 blah. What does it you wanna see? Do you want to see no crafting supplies? Do you want to see perfectly organized and you know very neat? Or do you, are you okay with there being a lot? You just want to know how to declutter it. Which brings me to the third tip, which is to set goals. So what are the goals that you have when it comes to your decluttering? Do you want to get it super organized? Like I said, what is your end result in mind? And so your goal would be like today, I am going to declutter everything I don't want. And the next part would be, okay, I'm going to decide how I'm going to organize it. What kind of containers I'm going to use, things like that. And then we get to the actual decluttering and organizing part. So what you're going to do is look at the crafting supplies that you have and decide if you actually use them. So for the polyfill, for example, we bought that for a craft that never actually happened. And I know we will not be using it. So I'm going to take that and donate it because somebody else can use that craft. And I think that quite often, a lot of us who craft or who have other hobbies, we buy things almost like um, with an idea of doing a craft and then we don't do that craft. Really be honest with yourself. Are you using it and do you like it? Um, a lot of people have a lot of quilting supplies, so they have a lot of excess fabric. Are you going to use that? And maybe some of those fabrics you don't like. So get rid of anything you don't like, get rid of anything you don't use. And of course, get rid of anything that is expired, like old paint that's all dried up, or anything that's damaged, things that just don't work well. Quite often people think, oh, I have this. If I just fixed it, then I could keep it. If you haven't fixed it by now, are you going to fix it? And if you really do think you will, then I'd love for you to give yourself like a time limit. And if you don't get it done, just say to yourself, you know what? I'm not going to get that done. And that's okay. It's okay to not get that thing done. And then I'd love for you to decide how you're going to store things. Now, I love storing things in glass jars, like for my candy things. I have a big thing coming up with my pantry soon you're going to see. Most of my hobbies actually involve like gardening and cooking, so I'm kind of lucky there. But maybe you're going to use boxes that are like solid so you can't see through so they look tidier. In that case, I really recommend labeling them clearly. One of the things I really do hazard people against is just throwing a bunch of things in a container. And I have done videos before about how I feel about baskets. I don't think it's a great idea to just randomly throw things in baskets. I think that every basket should have one designated category-ish. So like if you had one that was like a bunch of pencil crayons and you also also had pencils in there, you know, like, okay. And then of course it's what is your workspace going to look like? Are you going to keep things tidy and put away? Some people, they don't have a designated spot in their house for their work area. It's part of their dining room, which is of course like totally fine, but you're probably going to want that area very tidy. This room of our house, our friend built this house for himself and we ended up buying it, but this used to be a room where he had like a train 
set up. It's a very unique room and this whole room was just for that. So he could probably leave it kind of messy if he wanted to. I don't know if he did, but maybe you have like a sewing room or do you want everything left out? If you do, I totally understand that. Like maybe you want to leave things just so, but like for me at the end of the day with my office and my desk, I like to tidy things up and make sure that they are neat. Now I did mention before about baskets and organization. This video right here goes over when I went through my kitchen desk, which had a lot of things that could fall into a lot of categories that you might be interested in. So check that out here. I hope something great happens for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.